you, you just kind of had a reaction, you know, right there where it was their play and you're saying it's our play. Do you feel like there is that you know, almost split where it's like you and them? Most definitely. I mean, it's been that way since I got here. It's the Warriors and KD, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I understand that. And I feel like my teammates and the organization know exactly what I've done here or in off the court to become uh, part of this culture to kind of, uh, you know, kind of work, put my, stand my flag in this, you know, this coach and this organization I've done in, in the last two years. Pretty much everything that they asked me to do from the player, from the ambassador, I guess, of the organization, the community, from you know, working hard every single day, two hours of practice. So I know what I bring to the team. Every game since I've been in the league. Speaking of letting people be themselves, Draymond Green is another big personality and what have you. A lot was made about the altercation against the Clippers when y'all were playing, and e folks even alluded to that playing somewhat of a role in you electing to walk away from Golden State and go to Brooklyn. Speak to that at all, the relationship you have with Draymond Green. Speak to whether or not that had any impact whatsoever in your decision to leave Golden State. Yeah, I wish that wouldn't have happened. I feel like uh, that was a situation that definitely could have been avoided. It really came out of nowhere. And for us, you know, everybody was just looking for something to tear us down with, you know, and I think they used that. And that just brought in the, the firestorm from, you know, free agency to every day it was about my free agency. Every day it was about my disposition as a player, what I look like on the bench, what I look like, you know, during the game. So it opened it up. It opened up a lot of nonsense. You know, I think that could have been avoided. And me and Draymond talked about it. But what I will say is this. I don't know if nonsense is the word that you can use if you listen to what Draymond said a couple of weeks ago on Adrian Wojnarowski's podcast, where he talked about how Steve Kerr, Bob Myers came to, came to him saying that he needed to apologize to you for how he came at you. He said he refused at that particular moment in time because that's just not how he felt until he looked into your eyes and saw that his brother was hurt by what he said. Were you hurt? How exactly was it that you felt at that time when everything went down? When I say nonsense, I mean other people trying to jump in on a story and create something off of it when they don't really know all the facts. Got it. And I think that was annoying for everybody on the team. Um, but Draymond knew that he was out of line, and as men, we talked about it, and everybody around tried to get us to, um, you know, mend it fast because of the season, and we wanted to win, but, like, he had this process on how he wanted to handle things, and I respected that, and I had my process, and we just, eventually we came together. Last question on this subject, just to be clear, because I didn't, I don't recall the answer to this question. Did that play a role in you leaving Golden State? A little bit, yeah, for sure. Do you want to expand expand on that at all? Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, your teammate talked to you that way. You think about it a bit, but you know, we talked. Like I said, we talked about it, but definitely for sure, I'm not gonna lie about it. Katie, why do you ultimately uh, decide to leave? I just felt like I needed a switch. I felt like a lot of stuff in Golden State had reared its head, and I felt like uh, we. That was just going to be the end, no matter what. It's, especially for that group. Sean Livingston was retiring. Andre Iguodala was getting older. Our contracts were going to stifle the team and put us in the hole to get other players. So I was just like, you know, it was time for all of us to kind of separate. Appreciate you tuning in for the breakdown with Loki. So um, as you can see in the message, um, Clutch Points was saying that there seemed to be a lot of heated debates or exchanges during the Dubs title defense last season. As alluded by West, there are stories about head coach Steve Kerr and forward Draymond Green going at it in the locker room at times. So this has been going on for a while. Um, but also, um, if you see in the, the messages and Twitter, um, how I said that there was a lot going on behind the scenes. And also even with Sean Livingston, he said, shout out to Steve Kerr for dealing with a lot of BS this year. So breaking it down with um, Kevin Durant, you know, he, he comes to the Warriors because he wants to win championships. And he wins two out of three, almost Three, you know, if he got hurt, we can argue and go back and say a fourth like that. But he comes there to win championships and then he leaves. So, and they was like, you know, what could they have done better? So what I would have done if I was a general manager at that point is, see, because Draymond Green um, kind of forgot. So if you look it up, um, after they had lost to the, the Cavaliers that year that the Cavs won the, the championship, Draymond Green 
goes into, you know, his car. And afterwards, he he calls the owner and says, you know, hey, we need to get, you know, Kevin Durant. So the owner is like, OK, you know, and then pretty much, you know, Draymond just has to just say, you know what, I'm going to call him myself. So he calls Kevin Durant himself and he says, you know, we need you to get you to come here, whatever like that. So that's how the Hampton Five got set up and everything like that. So so Draymond, you know, calls him a B.I.T.C.H. And then he says, you know, we won championships before. And so, you know how it is when the players like, man, like they don't feel value. They don't feel appreciated. And as you saw in the, the message, Durant said it always felt like Kevin Durant and the Warriors. So at that point, if I was a general manager, I would have got rid of uh, Draymond Green. Now, they did try to suspend him, but I would have traded Draymond Green for like an Al Horford or somebody. So, so my question to you, who would you rather have? You know, Draymond Green, Clay and Steph or Kevin Durant, Clay and Steph. So it's your choice. Like I said, I do believe, you know, Draymond Green's a heck of a basketball player, but in that thing I would have I would I would stay with um, Kevin Durant. And even in the comments when Durant was saying, you know, and actually Stephen A had said, he had mentioned, he said, you know, that Draymond Green wasn't going to apologize. And so anytime a person really don't want to apologize, they really had that in there for a while. And they really been waiting to say that because he said that regardless of the fact, you know, and so to me, that ultimately was the reason why Kevin Durant ended up leaving. And I believe that if they would have traded Draymond Green, I believe that Kevin Durant would have stayed. It would have been more likely that he would have stayed because it would have showed them, listen, we, we want you to make you feel like you you here and whatever like that. So that's what I look at. Um, let me know how you feel in the comments, what you think about it. But that's what I would have did. I would have traded Draymond Green and no matter who we got, the draft pick or whatever. And I would have built around uh, Kevin Durant, Clay and Steph.